A lot of people are wondering what the heck's happening in the real estate world. I'm getting calls all day. What's happening in the real estate market? What's happening in property values? Are there buyers? Are there sellers? And there is not a better expert in the state of Montana than Greg Fay. Fay Ranches, he's a founder, broker, amazing angler, great dad, good all around guy. Greg, welcome to the platform. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Eric. Appreciate it. <laughs> Well, Greg, uh, a lot of people don't realize that when you're a ranch broker, not only do you got to be an expert in ranches, but you've got to have a truck with a really good set of tires ready to put some miles on. Uh, how many miles have you driven this month? Oh, God. You know, it's, it's interesting. There are, <clears throat> there's a few months there where we don't drive a whole lot, you know, December, January, February. But, um, you know, for the most part, I'm, it's not too bad. It's about 35000 a year. Yeah. Um, but we put most of those on in six months. Yeah, well, I'm sure you get around. Well, um, Faye Ranches, um, you know, give us a little history. You've, you've been around and you founded this back in 1992. Any other fun history tidbits about your, your business and your team that you've assembled now? Oh, God. Um, yeah, we, so I started the company back in 1992 and uh, I was in the basement of my brother's house. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I mean, it was a bit of a wing and a prayer at the time, to be quite honest with you. I didn't know anybody who could afford a ranch or really anyone who owned one at the time. I just came up here cause I really wanted to fish and hunt and ski and figured if I sold ranches, I'd probably get some pretty cool places to do that. And, and that was kind of the motivation. Um, and then it, it just evolved and, and, you know, one step at a time. Um, I wouldn't say it was a meteoric rise, but, um, you know, a lot of perseverance just kind of stuck with it and, uh, and started adding folks. And now we have, you know, we're coast to coast. So we have um, people from Oregon to Florida. We've got 30 agents. Uh, we deal in all sorts of land, um, just depending upon the geography and what what its particular use is in that area. So, you know, obviously in Montana, it's farms and ranches, uh, fishing and hunting. Um, you know, we do timber properties up in the Northwest, uh, plantations in the Southeast, some vineyards. Um, it, it's really become so interesting. Um, you know, as we, we've expanded, for me personally, just to see the different, you know, value drivers in the different areas of the country and learn so much from all these agents who have expertise that I don't have and uh, spend some time with them in their neck of the woods and, and hear what they've got to say. It's, it's, been, a, it's been a fun ride. Yeah, well, you've built a, you built a great team and if you go visit their team or look at their website, you realize all of them have a great skill. They're either great hunters or anglers or conservationists. You know, in the real estate business, first thing, this is usually the biggest investment anyone would make in their life. And so there's a lot of people tuning in today to wonder kind of about the real estate market. Your specialty, while vast across the country in, in the Montana landscape, is definitely with ranches and the big properties um, throughout the state. You know, and as we go through different things, 9-11 and, and the 08 crash, you know, real estate obviously has different ways that it's impacted. You know, what have you seen in the last eight weeks, Greg? And, and you know, what's been the, the surprise um, since, you know, the world started shutting down back in mid-March? Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been an interesting phenomenon to observe and, and watch. Um, like you say, so, you know, we've been around 28 years, so I've seen some downturns, um, and obviously the most impactful was 2008, um, but never, you know, never a downturn caused by a pandemic. So a little bit of a different animal. I think we've all been sort of sitting around waiting to see what the effect it's it will have on the land market. You know, we're a little bit different animal than the big sky resort real estate market or, or the real estate market in Bozeman itself. Um, and it has been very interesting to watch it evolve. Um, what we're seeing 
Um, so we're, we're big into statistics um, and we, we kind of keep track of everything that we can that's measurable. Um, and then of course, a lot of our information is anecdotal through conversations with clients and, and other agents and so forth. Um, but what we're seeing is a surge in interest in land. Um, you know, our, our, some of our measurables are kind of predictable, social media, you know, how much time people are spending on our website, um, everybody sitting around looking at their computer. So those, those were kind of uh, somewhat predictable, but we're also seeing execution. You know, folks are buying ranches. I think what I'm hearing from people is, you know, the phrase is land is the great insulator. So my family and I uh, have owned a ranch with partners down uh, in Madison County for 25 years. And, um, you know, when this all happened, I just gathered them up. We went down to the ranch and, and there wasn't another human within a mile of our, of our cabin down there. And, um, you know, we, we, we felt pretty darn safe. And so what we're seeing is a lot of our clients, you know, six or eight weeks ago when this all started, they flew out from Houston or New York or San Francisco to the ranch that we've sold them. And, and they've been sheltering on their ranch. Um, for several weeks. And I, apparently they're talking to their friends about it because they're also going out and we're, we're showing ranches to them for their friends uh, who can't obviously come out here. It's been kind of crazy. Um, and, uh, you know, in anticipation of this call, I, I called some of my agents just to touch base in different parts of the country and see what they're seeing and kind of the same thing. They're all busy. Wow. And you, and you hear that, you know, across the board, there's little segments of, of whether you're in the hand sanitation business or the, yeah. or the ventilator business, or it turns out the ranch business and they're all, you know, doing well. And I can tell you as a, as a counterpoint a, a real estate market, like big sky has been pretty much turned off since the resort turned off. There is a lot of people inquiring um, a lot of tire kicking, but very, you know, very slow execution. The Bozeman market, you know, the residential market's actually held pretty strong. Commercial market has to be expected. It's kind of struggle, but it's great to hear the ranches is, 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 you know, is surging and, and landing, being the great insulators is a great term. Um, Greg, what advice would you give to someone considering purchasing um, in this market today? And, and what advice would you give to a seller? You know, we're, from sellers, we are, you know, we're getting that, that question. Should I put my place on the market? You know, we're planning on selling this spring or summer. Um, should I fall through with that? We're telling them yes, um, just because of the, the level of activity that we're seeing. Um, and, and we are very inventory low right now. Um, you know, we carry, this time of year, about 600 million in land listings. And, uh, you know, as June approaches, July, we'll have, you know, we'll be touching a billion dollars in, in uh, land listings. Um, and right now we're at like, you know, compared to last year, we're about 70 million below what we had listed this time last year. And I think um, there is definitely a need for inventory excuse me, inventory. Um, and buyers, I mean, it, it's, every state's different. You know, Montana's got the two week quarantine. Not all states do. Um, I talked to my guys in Oregon and they've got folks driving into, into the state to look at stuff and everyone's practicing social distancing. They're taking separate trucks or separate UTVs. Um, and we're not really showing, you know, people aren't really going in houses. Um, but from a buyer standpoint, um, you know, if you've got a friend who's in the state, you know, you can ask them to bird dog for them. Um, but, you know, to some degree, it, your hands are tied a little bit. I mean, you know, just like Ryan, um, you know, we're curious 
about the two week quarantine and whether or not it's, it's gonna be lifted. Um, but having said that, my biggest concern is that there's a resurgence of the virus. Um, you know, we're looking forward to a busy summer with the amount of interest that we're getting. You know, if we, if, I don't know, it's a tough call. I mean, yeah. if we start relaxing the, the uh, social distancing, you know, it's anybody's guess whether or not that, that causes a resurgence. I'd hate to see that um, uh, in no, for no small, uh, you know, big reason is I really want to go to the PBR. Uh, that would be an unfortunate casualty. Um, but yeah, buyers, I mean, it's, it's, you know, we'll just have to see. Yeah, um, absolutely. Greg, one of, the, one of the markets that you deal with from a seller's perspective is you deal with that multi-generational family that has made the decision to, to maybe part with a property. And I think those people can kind of fall into one of two buckets. Either they decided by choice to move on from their property or, you know, because of commodity prices or cattle prices or grain prices, they've been forced to sell that. Are you starting to see that, that, that crack in the armor where you're seeing families have to make that decision to sell a property because of what's happened to them in, in this, in this economy? You know, it's amazing how unimpacted those multi-generational farms or ranches are. Um, you know, we don't, for the most part, we don't see a lot of them come on the market because of commodity pressure. It's, it's almost always, um, you know, the, the folks are getting older and their kids, you know, are not taking over the ranch. They've moved to Denver or Seattle and have a job doing something else. Um, and, uh, you know, I've been out to a few big ranches here over the last 30 days, people thinking of putting their place on the market. And, uh, you know, they're kind of joking that they've been self-quarantining for 40 years. I mean, they, you know, they don't, they don't have a lot of interaction with humans anyways. I mean, they're, they're kind of, it, it has not affected their, their daily life. Yeah. Um, they're in the tractor, or they're moving cows. Um, you know, they're, they've got a lot of space around them. Yep. Um, so I haven't seen the coronavirus really um, prompt anyone to sell. That's a multi-generational family. No, that's good to hear. That's, that's, um, that's important. You know, one of the last questions I got for you, Greg, is, is, and I know this has always been a pillar of your business, but is the word conservation. And yeah. so being someone that comes from the real estate business, I've always, I've kind of been brought full circle on this of realizing the power and importance of conservation. And it's, it's kind of counterintuitive to be talking to a real estate broker and ask him about conservation. But I'd like to ask what you feel your role is within that and, and, uh, and your take in, on the importance of that moving forward as Montana, you know, turns the lights back on and goes back to normal. Yeah, it, it, conservation has been, you know, one of the pillars of the company from the beginning. And it, it's, um, you know, we really only bring on agents who sort of share that. Um, and it's keeping the land working. It's keeping it in farms and ranches, timber. Um, it, you know, it, it, there's places where obviously homes, you know, I mean, I'm in a house. I mean, there's places where it's appropriate. Um, our rural landscape and the, the working farms and ranches, I mean, they, they literally are feeding America and we have to protect them. And it's been a team effort. Um, you know, in the land brokerage business, there's, there's a lot of, you know, agents from other companies too who share this. We want to, you know, we want to see it stay open and stay productive. And when somebody comes in from out of state and buys a ranch, you know, their intent really isn't to make money, isn't to, isn't to subdivide it. And there's really not a whole lot of, uh, that market really doesn't exist. R rural subdivision in Montana has been proven repeatedly not to be a particular moneymaker. But, but um, you know, conservation easements have been a tremendous tool for us. And um, with folks who have 
a lot of income, it's a tremendous tax uh, tool. So whether somebody, you know, is conservation minded or not, once you introduce them to conservation easements and how effective they can be uh, as a tax strategy, um, they become a conservationist pretty darn quick. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is, it's, it's critical. You know, we've all seen other states that really have succumbed to the pressures of subdivision and there's houses on the rivers and, um, you know, which of course is the riparian area, which is both the most productive agriculturally and most productive from a wildlife standpoint. And it's been very impactful to those states. And um, there's more acreage under conservation easement in Montana than any other state in the country. A lot of that is due to the Montana Land Reliance and some of the other land trusts that have been very effective. Um, but I think, you know, we've really made some headway. Um, you know, those 20 acre tracks 25, 30 years ago were really starting to show up and uh, we call them recreational ghettos. Um, and the, you know, the business plan was loan 100% of the money to the buyer and then get it back and resell it in five years. And that model was really having a negative impact on rural Montana. Um, and it's virtually, I mean, it's gone. It doesn't exist anymore um, through the hard work of a lot of people. And um, yeah, it's been great. It's a good, uh, it's an important factor. Absolutely. Well, um, Greg, I really appreciate you taking time. Um, it's fascinating to hear that the, you know, the ranch real estate market is surging and, and while it doesn't have direct correlation to the, our market, uh, it does because it's all interconnected. And there's not a person up here that doesn't, you know, think about those ranches or a lot of people do own ranches around the state and everybody drives past those big open landscapes. So I yeah. appreciate your time. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us before you leave or a good fish story? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, it, uh, I, I've rekindled a, a love affair with, with fishing. I, you know, I have two boys, 11 and 14 and, and, uh, a business to run and, and, uh, I really haven't fished as much as I did when I was a single guy, which was a lot. And, and uh, I get, did a lot of fishing here in the past six weeks and it's, it's been kind of nice. And it's, it's been nice to watch Montana transition from winter to spring and, and observe some of the things that I maybe have been not paying attention to over the last, you know, 28 years of, of working. And it was a silver lining. I think, I think folks are going to be reconnecting a little bit with some of the things maybe we haven't been paying as much attention to. No, absolutely. Well put, well put. And, uh, and, and in spite of that, I, I, I got the PBR buckle here. So um, I want to hand this out this year. So come <laughs> hell or high water. And if it's safe, we're going to be hosting that PBR in big sky and, and appreciate your support. And hopefully we'll be sharing a beer with or without it's, a mask on. So, you know, it really is one of the highlights of our summer. <laughs>